your guide to the truth. The new American media dot com. Broadcasting to you live from the Milky Way galaxy, the solar system, solar system where a comet's going to be whizzing past Earth soon. Here in Los Angeles, California, hello everybody and welcome to another episode of Agree to Disagree here on the TNAM radio network here at thenewamericanmedia.com. My name is Brian Engelman, I am your host as I have been for the past four and a half years. I want to thank you for joining us, I want to thank you for linking up and following us on all of the places in social media where we're making a difference. Um, some of those places include youtube.com slash thenewamericanmedia, click subscribe. And make sure that you're commenting on our videos, our conversations, our interviews, the, the projects that we've done over the past nearly half decade. Yes, leading the way with the new American media. But yeah, youtube.com slash the new American media. Click subscribe. If you let those advertisements play, it's like tossing a penny or two into our wishing well. We appreciate that. We need that. We want to grow. We are growing. You know, we, we said something on, uh, we have a sports group, by the way. It's called the Unhappy Hour Sports Group. It's the Unhappy Hour Sports Show. It's, it's a private group, and if we can confirm that you're either an Indians, Cavs, Browns, or Buckeye fan, we're going to let you in there. You don't have to get them all right. we got some people that are big Cavs fans, but they like uh, Steelers for some unknown reason. Clint, we know some people that are big <clears throat> Cleveland Browns fans, but they root for that team up north. John. You know, we got some of you that are weirdos, but it's all right. If you're a fan of one of those, link up with us. Find us on that group. It's a lot of fun. We, we put out there yesterday that um, ESPN just announced that they're, they're uh, canceling, they're uh, shutting down Grantland, which was a pretty cool division. <laughs> it, was a, it was a pretty cool component of ESPN, and, you know, they're, they're, they're cutting back staff. They're, they're, they're trimming their budgets. They're firing people. They're... Uh, they're, they're losing some money, so they're they're getting rid of some things. Maybe some of the least um, least awesomely performing members of their portfolio. Although there's quite a few things about that network, including Tony Tony Kornheiser comparing Tea Party people to terrorists. Um, you wonder why they suspend Kurt Schilling for a fairly innocuous uh, post about Islamic extremism and violent radical Islamic beliefs. <clears throat> They, f they fire him, but then they, they let all the left-wing stuff through, which makes you wonder uh, about them and their parent company, Disney, um, who have been in the news lately because they're firing a lot of their U.S. staff, and they're bringing in foreigners from across, uh, ac across the uh, pond um, from other countries um, with these special work visas so they can hire them for half. Um, you know, you're getting rid of American jobs, and you're, you're making us poorer. You want us to keep supporting you. But you're, you're going to encourage that type of stuff. Uh, why are we doing that? You know, <clears throat> it's all about the bottom line, but it's about more than the bottom line because we vote with our dollars. And so the post that we put up was that ESPN is shrinking and the unhappy hour is growing. Uh, this is a good trend. <laughs> this is nice. You know, we've been doing this for a little while. We have very big plans for what, what we're up to and um, any way that you can support us, including... Um, watching those advertisements on YouTube is fantastic. It helps us expand the empire. Uh, we do have a 10-year plan to become the world's largest media company, so it's going to take a lot of funding, but we want to do it the right way. You know, We want to make sure people here are making some money and, and keeping their jobs and not outsourcing it um, for cheap labor and leaving our people, our own people, the people that belong in this country, us, Americans, um, leaving us jobless, You know, throwing us on crap, now I can't pay the mortgage, I need to go on government assistance, like that's, that's, that's not cool stuff, um, but anyway, check out that show, I want to thank Brandon O'Dell for coming and joining us and talking about the, the Ohio State Buckeyes, JT Barrett quarterback did just get suspended, and the Cleveland Browns, and a little bit of the Cavaliers, who look great um, after that first game, Sh shook a little bit of the rust off, man, they're going to be dangerous, especially when Kyrie Irving comes back. But anyway, check out our homepage, thenewamericanmedia.com. On the right-hand side is TNAM Radio. Underneath that is where you find our Facebook feed, or you can search for The New American Media with spaces in between them, like the page. Um, and underneath that is our Twitter feed, at American underscore media underscore. So, you know, I want to kind of go through here on Agree to Disagree and kind of go over some of the events that we saw last week. Um, one of the biggest things is uh, I want to talk about the fired 
Um, the man who got fired for removing a brat from high school. You know, I've railed against police abuse several times on, over the years. Um, most notably, uh, Kelly Thomas getting beaten and killed by many, 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 many Fullerton, California cops on camera as he's calling out for his father. And just the big puddle of blood is growing and growing and growing, and they beat this man to death, and these guys got off. Um, you know, Tamir Rice, Eric Garner, we have video of these. Um, Trayvon Martin, uh, Eric Garner, we do not. Um, you know, video is powerful, but, you know, we got to break it down. You know, this, this cop that got fired, big important point, this guy didn't punch this kid who was disrupting the entire class. He didn't kick that kid. <clears throat> he didn't choke that kid. He didn't tase that kid. He didn't shoot that kid. He asked her many times to move. She would not move from her desk. He removed her from the desk, got her on the ground, cuffed her, and got her out of there. Whoa, what an outrage. You know, there's a lot of stuff we could be legitimately outraged about, but I don't think that's one of them. So anyway, to talk about this and a few other things that you might have missed last week, I want to bring in Blake Wally. Blake is a gonzo journalist. Um, you can check out he and I went to Politicon and got a lot of good interviews with Larry Elder, Michael Steele, John Fugelsang, David Webb, um, Hugh Hewitt, um, Michelle Bachman, Jenk Uger from the Young Turks, um, got a lot of good conversation on video. Uh, Blake was out there for that, and of course, Blake was also with me when I went out to the Bundy Ranch and covered that situation and interviewed the family members when it was going down. So we'll get him back to the program, and we'll talk about this and a few other things right about now. Is that okay with you? I hope it's okay. Hello. What's up, Blake? You are live on Agree to Disagree. How you doing, sir? Fantastic. How are you, Brian? Uh, living the dream. As always. Surprisingly enough. Yeah. Still, right? Um, well, hey, you know, I wanted to bring you in kind of, oh, by the way, Blake's on Twitter at Eccentric99 if you want to follow a lot of important news stories. Blake's always scouring for the current breaking information and given the good perspective on that, the Eccentric Perspective. That's also the website, eccentricperspective.com. Check those out. Um, Blake, I kind of led the show off talking about what happened um, with this Spring Valley High School in South Carolina. Um, officer Ben Fields, the school resource, resource officer, was fired after removing a brat child from her chair um, after being told by the teacher and being told by an administrator to leave the room. And after he came in and told her to get up and leave the classroom, he had to, to remove her. Um, I want to get your take on this. I know it, you know this did happen a week ago, something like that, um, and everybody's been talking about it. But you know, on, on things like this, I like to make sure that I think it through before I run up, spout off at the mouth and claim this or claim that or call for anything. And oh, there's injustice. I got to kind of think it through and look at it. I don't want to be rash in my. Um, opinion making of it. Same thing I did with Trayvon Martin, same thing I did with Eric Garner. So uh, what, what's your take on this whole thing? I think he, uh, he overreacted, definitely, but uh, at the same time uh, something needed to be done and she's, I think as you said, I don't know if you tweeted that out, she was a brat. Uh, certainly needs some discipline. I don't know what her story is or uh, what her parents were like, but uh, the fact that she would have presented herself as such an enormous obstacle to everybody um, and to put up that much of a fight and distract everybody and make everything about her, yeah, you know what, she deserved to get her butt kicked a little bit, but um, yeah, he overreacted. Uh, I, I have to say there too. Yeah, and so you and you would you would you would hope the parents were the ones doing the buck kicking. You know, regardless of how scummy somebody is, you want to say I, I want to see the police use as much force as possible to quickly, if not immediately, subdue the subject, slap handcuffs on, neutralize the current ongoing situation, and then pause and reevaluate. That's what I want to see. You know, I don't want to see. 15 years in Afghanistan, putzing around little campaigns here and there, and it's a permanent occupation. You know, if you got to punch a bully, punch him in the mouth, 
and, and end the situation. Now, I'm making that analogy, of course, of, uh, of a war and a conflict between governments. Um, you know, I don't want to literally see police officers punching people in the face if there's other options. And my point, Blake, was, you know, we've, we've covered the Kelly Thomas killing of, by the Fullerton, California Police Department um, so much over the years. It was the worst thing ever if you want to see it on YouTube. They kill him live on camera. It's, it's, it's one of the most horrible things you'll see. Um, uh, you know, but this officer, this uh, school resource source officer, Ben Fields, he didn't punch this person, he didn't kick this person, he didn't choke this person, he didn't tase this person, he didn't shoot this person, he didn't sick dogs on this person. He asked her many times, probably a couple too many times. You ask and then you follow up, in, in my opinion. But he gave her all um, ample opportunity to remove herself from the room. Um, you know, and, and she wasn't moving. She was holding on to her desk. How else are you going to yank somebody out of their desk other than yanking them out of their desk? And then when you got them, you get them on the ground, you put cuffs on, and you go, all right, now come with me. And that's what happened here. So I don't really understand why um, there's really been as much of an outrage over this other than the fact that now let's get into it. Oh, he was a white guy and she was a young black girl. Uh, what, what do you make of the racial component here? Because it seems like there's a, 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 a certain group of people that always want to instantly claim everything is racist without really stepping back and looking at the situation objectively. Yeah, no, you're absolutely right. The people are always quick to jump on that, and that, was, uh, that, that made it a worse story, and maybe that had something to do with uh, him getting fired. So that would be an interesting... Uh, you know, if we, if we could redo the situation with a with a white girl and then see if the same thing uh, happens, but that's not possible. So, uh, but I also heard that uh, I think it I think it came from uh, the police chief or something that said that the guy had a black girlfriend. Uh, this cop, so he's not really a uh, racist or any kind. He's he's got to do do something about it, and you want to you know see some kind of discipline and it's sad that this something like this has to happen and it's just like you got to wonder about this girl how huh? she's got just zero respect for uh, her classmates the teacher and then the authority once once they show up i mean she had it coming and you know you just like to see it uh, i don't i don't know what you do in that situation but i don't know if the guy deserves to lose his job over it um yeah it, it's it, it's complicated well, but, uh, yeah, I don't think there's anything racist about it, unless you know I see more evidence. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm, I'm just not seeing it. Um, you know, th th there was another video that came out where a California student just body slammed a high school principal. Three arrests have been made. You know, like you, you got to be careful with this. You know, you see it a lot of times where someone's getting arrested, and you'll see a mob of people around you. And, and all of a sudden you're trying to, you know, I've, I've watched a lot, far too many of these videos over the past four and a half years, but um, now that everybody has the ability to document things, which is why I do call for every police officer or peace officer or security officer to have body cameras that cannot be uh, manually turned off. But, you know, you've seen it before where you go to arrest somebody and the situation starts dragging out, then somebody yells something and then somebody throws something and then somebody comes in and all of a sudden it's turned into a mob scene. If, if, you, if, you, if, if something has reached the point where an arrest needs to be made, it needs to be done quickly. I'm not saying harshly or violently, but it needs to be done as quickly as possible. And yanking a girl that's holding on and, and pushing her legs out and sticking and holding on to her, to her desk, who then in one of the videos you can clearly see she takes a swing at the officer's head, by the way. Um, you know, you look at this video in California, a student body slamming the high school principal. You know, I don't want this, this officer in the school to, to be putzing around and, all right, I've asked you to come. Come with me. Come on. Come on. You got to go. Let's go. Come on. And then you, you grab an arm and then she's not moving and then it just drags on. And then someone in the back's like, leave her alone. And then, and then someone, you, you don't want that. I'm asking you one more time. You need to come with me. You've been told by the teacher. You've been told by the administrator. Let's get out in the hallway. Um, this is this has gone on far far too long. You know what? You yank her out. You put her on the ground. You put cuffs on. Now, if he was kicking her once, he handcuffed her. If he elbow slammed her. If he choked her. If he slammed her face into a 
a wall once she was cuffed. These are things you can fire someone for. I'm totally for that. And that's an important distinction that needs to be made. I didn't see it get excessive. Um, and it was interesting to see some of the follow-up, too, because, you know, some people want to make it seem like, oh, yeah, everybody supports this. That's not really the case. I'm looking here on Russia Today, and there are hundreds of students that protest the firing of the body-slamming South Carolina cop. Um, students walked out of class at 10 a.m. on Friday morning and into the school's atrium for 15 minutes to protest before the administrators ordered them back to the class. So there's a lot of people... Um, you know, wearing hashtag Bring Back Fields t-shirts, uh, appear to be African-American girls, by the way. Um, one student says uh, he was a great guy. He protected us and everything. He was our school resource officer. We could always depend on him and everything. Every time I saw him, he was always joking around with people. It was never like, oh, I'm about to body slam you. So, you know, from at least this one person, he's like, this wasn't like some rogue ticking time bomb. Uh, pardon the uh, set your clocks back. Um, Ahmed Ahmed in uh, Texas clock bomb uh, meme joke here. You could that that's where we can right. use that. But you know, like this is something where at least this student and a few of these people and a few hundred people are saying, bring this guy back. He had, he did what he had to do, and so this is um, a situation here. Let me play this. This is where the uh, principal Jeff Timoni um, he addressed the students that walked out um, in support of Officer Fields. Uh, I can't go into details as you all know. Nobody's going to be suspended, okay, so don't worry about that part, but, but we heard your voices, okay? We uh, appreciate you taking the time to do this, um, but again, as you know, we always focus on teaching and learning, okay? So uh, let's head on back to class. So, you know, this is just somebody's cell phone, and, and um, you know, the it, it, it was an interesting component. This is something that just happened yesterday, you know. So, you know, while the story broke several days ago, this is interesting to see students, black and white, uh, you know, it looks like a total um, cross-section of, of America looking. There's, there's a lot of different races represented in these few videos that you see. People are protesting this action, saying it was an overreaction. They want this guy back. So what, what do you make of the students, or at least these few hundred students, uh, speaking up and saying that this is a ridiculous action by the school board? Wow, you know, I, I, I didn't know that until now, and uh, in light of that situation, then yeah, then it should be, uh, hopefully he will get his job back if he's uh, uh, has that much respect, so this is a good guy, and yeah, he got caught in this, well, this is a really tough situation, because, uh, yeah, I mean, I don't know what you do, and then you're talking about other countries, RT or whatever, you just imagine this kind of thing, you know, <laughs> where people put up with this. Or what are what are what is he supposed to do exactly? Uh, because you know people in other countries would I, I can't imagine they would let students you know do something like this or get away with this. But we can say in our own country. I even think I don't know if it was Glenn Beck or somebody I heard giving their take and just saying you know back in the day there was no student would ever you know do something like this and get away with it. Uh, you, you just don't do something like this. So how did this girl get so far into her life and just so enormously? You know, selfish and undisciplined, and have with with no respect for anybody. And you know, if your parents if your parents don't you know get that out of you in, in your kid, I guess you know you grow up to be a, a, a nasty little uh, young adult like she is. And you know, sometimes you need to be uh, you need to be humbled. You need to be taught a lesson. Um, <laughs> Uh, I mean, I the Catholic schools. The Catholic down, schools would. The Catholic schools would have brought out the ruler. They would have whooped your butt, you know. And then you get home, and your parents would have whooped your butt worse than before. I mean, there's, you know, some people want to want to um, want to try parenting with the complete hands-off approach, uh, like Ned Flanders' father on The Simpsons, if you remember that episode. <laughs> hey, man, it's a bunch of hippies. We've tried nothing, and we're all out of ideas, man. You know, like that's how they were raising Hurricane Nettie to repress all of his emotion and become diddly hidly hodily. Um, uh, if you know the reference, it's hilarious. If you don't, go check it out. But um, you know, too many it, Simpsons episodes over too many years. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I well, I, I I'm I'm an enormous fan, um, especially the first ten or twelve years. Um, <laughs> but anyway, yeah, it's 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 a situation where you look at the, every 
circumstance you can. And you, and you look at, you know, to, to compare another thing that some people said was racist and I never understood was Eric Garner and Ferguson. You know, th th this kid robs a, a store. He's walking in the middle of the street. He's confronting an officer. He attacks an officer. He reaches inside for the gun. He gets shot by an officer from inside of his car. Well, what do you have to be doing? T tell me the last time I've went in and leaned into a cop car <laughs> for any reason. I don't want to be anywhere near those things. If, if there's any, you know, if, if, if you're doing things that are asking for a reaction, you're causing a problem. And if the problem gets big enough, like blocking traffic, strong arm robbery, um, you know, refusing to listen to your teacher, to your administrator, or to your school security officer. You know, you're asking for a physical confrontation. This guy gave her every single chance to comply. So did the teacher, so did the administrator. She's the one that forced him to get physical. This wasn't some guy that, you know, students are walking past in the hallway in the courtyard or something after lunch, and you see a cell phone video of a police officer or a security officer uh, throwing a flying elbow into somebody's skull, knocking, you know, knocking a couple teeth out, and you go, okay, yeah, this guy needs to be in jail. He just assaulted her. This cop did what he had to do. It's a dangerous job. When students can attack teachers in other places, you know, you need to meet the situation head on. You don't dance with trouble. If 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 you if if you can find the situation, you confront it, you relax, you react to it, you pause, you get your options, and then you reconsider once you've neutralized the the situation. He did that. He did that quickly. I got you know on my outrage meter. You know we can talk about Tamir Rice where you know there was a report that he was walking around with a gun and he was. And I watched a few minutes of it and yeah, it's suspicious, weird activity. It wasn't like he was playing cops and robbers. He kept putting it in his in his waistband and he was taking it out aiming at people. Then he putting it back in and he was creeping people out. But you you can legitimately watch the video and say when the police go flying over the curb into the park and then jump out and instantly shoot and kill the kid. You know maybe one command would have been helpful to give him an opportunity to, to realize, oh crap, what's happening? No, 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 my hands are up here. Guys, chill, chill, chill. You know, you, you would want to give an opportunity for that. This kid had the opportunity for that. And Eric Garner, it's not like somebody walked up to him in class and then uh, caused that situation. You know, he's, he's robbing things and attacking officers and out in the street and charging cops after. You know, it's, it's just... No, that was Michael Brown. Uh, well, I can't, oh, okay. Yeah. I'm sorry. Did I say that the no, first right. time? I might have said that the first time, too. Michael Brown. Anyway, you know, it's just case by case. And on this one, I got no problem with it. So I, I just wanted to react to it, especially now uh, when you have hundreds of people, hundreds of the students saying he's a great guy, walking out, hashtag bring back fields, African-American kids wearing this, at least what appear to be African-American, I don't know, whatever. It doesn't matter. I don't care about the race. I looked at it and said if that's a black dude, white dude, I, I don't care. The situation, this kid needed to be taken out of class. And she wasn't taken out of class and roughed up. She wasn't taken out of class and then got two black guys, broke her wrist. You know, it, it wasn't something like that. So anyway, I just wanted to cover that. But, you know, it, it's been a long, busy week. There have been a lot of different stories going on. I was wondering if there's any in particular that stand out to you, Blake. I know, um, obviously, there was another debate with the Republicans. I don't know if you maybe wanted to start off with that, kind of what you learned from that debacle. Yeah, I mean, I could just probably give you a rundown of some of the uh, headlines. But, yes, it's definitely the Republican debate was uh, one of the top stories of the week. Um, let's see. Oh, we got the, uh, the Senate passing the debt and spending hike in the dead of the night. Uh, yeah. Rand Paul was supposed to do a filibuster, which he talked about at the debate. Well, we'll get it. Describe that for a second. Well, I'm just kind of going through the, uh, in the, the headlines here. You can start wherever you want. Well, yeah. Let me let me let me ask. Explain that. What 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 do you mean in the dead of the night? How was this? How did this happen? Well, let's probably start with this uh, Washington Times article here. Budget buster. Okay, so Senate Republicans managed to wrangle enough of their troops to overcome a filibuster early Friday morning and pass the new budget deal, granting President Obama yet another debt holiday busting the budget caps and boosting spending some $80 billion over the next two years. Democrats, who are far more thrilled with the deal, did the heavy lifting, providing most of the votes as they won some $40 billion in new domestic spending in 2016 and 2017. They also forced the GOP to retreat on the hard-fought 2011 budget agreement that had helped bring deficits back under control. Uh, 
uh, conservative Republicans were irate at their leaders and at defense hawks within the GOP who forced the deal by saying it was worth busting the caps in order to get the Pentagon more money at a time when the U.S. is fighting the war on terror. Always. So, yes, it's, it's your establishment Democrats and your, you know, your war hawk neocon Republicans uh, getting together. To, they're having some trouble, I guess. Well, this is this is for the uh, you know the Senate because we've had because we've also got uh, Paul Ryan or as uh, <laughs> some say Paul Rhino uh, as the <laughs> new uh, House Speaker and there's uh, there's there's a big rift going on between the, uh, the Tea Party kind of libertarian type uh, Republicans and then the uh, the establishment types you know working with the Democrats and they got uh, yeah Paul Rhino in and now they're uh, doing these uh, the typical uh, Washington shenanigans. I guess uh, getting this thing going, uh, passing a budget deal, of course, they're going to go way over and spend uh, way more than we bring in, and I guess that's supposed to be that's supposed to be normal. And the people that want the you know, the Tea Party people who want to actually live within our means and maybe cut some spending, uh, you know, they have to uh, you know they get they're, they're the ones that are supposedly crazy, while the other ones just spend us into oblivion and, and push us to the verge of bankruptcy. Um, so let me go to, uh, here's a quote here from Rand Paul, who was supposed to do a filibuster, but I guess he wasn't, uh, was never allowed to or something from McConnell. It gets, it gets pretty muddy and confusing, but here's a quote. He says, this deal represents the worst of Washington culture, said Representative Rand Paul, uh, who vowed he'd lead the filibuster, but saw his efforts fall short to what he called a, quote, unholy compromise between the right and the left. Uh, the bill cleared on a 64 to 35. 18 of these Republicans joined the Democrats, and President Obama said the deal will, quote, break the cycle of shutdowns and manufactured crises that he and Congress have uh, been through the last few years. You think maybe if they, you know, spent within their budget, they wouldn't have to worry about a shutdown, but they just want to uh, spend as much money as possible um, they don't really care uh, so much about the consequences of the future, and they can justify that by saying that they don't have to shut down. Uh, it's just a terrible uh, way that they manage uh, the nation's money. Uh, quote, this agreement will strengthen the middle class. This is from Obama. This agreement will strengthen the middle class by investing in education, job training, and basic yeah. research. God. Yeah, ju ju just safe. like Obama yeah. said that uh, the American household is going to save $2,500 because of Obamacare, and that instead it's gone up 200 300% <laughs> on families, crushing the middle class. And just like we can trust him when he says that we'll have no boots on the ground in Syria. Yeah, guess what? Another broken promise by Barack Obama, who's not getting called to task at all. But the liberal media, let's go back a few decades. Remember how much fun we made of uh, Dan Quayle because he spelled potato incorrectly you know yeah. and, and you look at the absurdity of this debate it's just like you, you, the left gets a pass on everything and I'm sick of it it's garbage you know this president lies about everything so he's talking about saddling the next generation with even more and more and more debt and he's saying this is going to be good for the second for the middle class this will be great for the middle class get out of here have some faith, Brian. You don't trust the uh, the federal government, uh, you know, taking your money and uh, investing it in education and job training. You don't think that's <laughs> going to uh, revolutionize uh, <laughs> the next generation? That could never. We're all that could thank never. Obama for spending away all that money. We're like, wow, you know, he really built up the middle class again with all that uh, <laughs> job training. That could never turn into a boondoggle, Blake. Never. Um, <laughs> right. Remember when those crazy Tea Party Republicans wanted to uh, cut spending, but then Obama insisted, and then they got together in the middle of the night and uh, passed this uh, new budget bill in uh, 2015, and that that was a really game changer. That's when the uh, the economy turned around, and we were glad that we uh, spent more money and got more into debt. <laughs> oh, the snarcasm is strong in right. this one. Um, no, to piggyback off that, I just, I just kind of want to play this. I just think it's important when you talk about a government getting out of control. Just humor me here. It's, it's only a minute or two long, but it's. Uh, <clears throat> this is a former president warning us about. We what's now happening. stand ten years past the midpoint of a century that has witnessed four major wars among great nations. Oh yeah. Okay. Now it's gonna. Play music. I don't want the music. Oh, actually, you know what? I think this busted me last time. 
I think because it played the mu- I'm sorry because it played the no music worries. I think it flagged um, where the heck is this sorry I should have had this set up in advance um, but I did I set it to the right point but they play music underneath and I think then they flag the video for matching third party content it's like this is a news thing this is Dwight Eisenhower discussing yeah. stuff the acquisition of unwarranted influence whether sought or unsought by the military industrial complex the potential for the disastrous rise of misplaced power exists and will persist. You have to realize. Anyway, you know what? Forget it. I'll just. The point is, Dwight Eisenhower no was warning uh, us about at this. At some point in the future, Brian, we're gonna we gonna maybe get a podcast together, and then you can uh, go and just edit that stuff in later. Yeah, yeah. People I... will never know. It'll just go <laughs> so smoothly. I know. I, I just got to build that team of people that in are awesome. Time. Exactly. Um, yeah, so, radio is always fun for these moments as well. I know, I know, I know. But but that's what you were saying, though, is that, you know, in this never-ending war on terror, straight out of 1984, you know, you're always at war with somebody, and you never even know who it is when it gets so convoluted. I mean, ISIS, did we start it? Are we funding it? Are we? Why are we in... It just, it gets so complicated and stupid. Um, you know, it's you can't find your way out of it. But you, you know what? The one thing you do know for sure, it needs more money. And that's why the Republicans and Democrats, completely controlled by this military-industrial complex, it just means that when you build it up so much and you, you invest so much money into these things and the technology and uh, promises that we're going to buy 100,000 of these things, we'll buy 10,000 of these things, we'll buy 5,000 of those things. If you don't have an enemy, you have to make an enemy. And and it's it's a bad situation. It's something where, you know, when every problem looks like a nail, every tool is going to look like a hammer. Um, and th- that's kind of where we're at right now. It's like you got to keep feeding this beast uh, to fund military bases in every country, and you got to go eighteen trillion in debt. And who knows what kind of blackmail and scare tactics are actually being used behind the scenes? But this is the result. And they can never cut back. They could be like, oh, okay, well, you know. You know, escalations of, uh, you know, I mean, it's really, the, the tensions have dropped. So, you know, we're going to, you know, take away these three or four bases. We're going to scale back the military, uh, you know, five to ten percent. They never, they never cut back anything. It just only balloons. And uh, we, we're pushing our country, what, 19 trillion in debt. I mean, it's just, it's just so out of hand. I don't even know what the debt is anymore. And then they keep just going way over budget. Like, there's another, like, trillion dollars that they're going to go over their budget and then that's okay and if you criticize that then you're you know basically some tea party terrorist who wants to shut the government down <laughs> that's that's where we've come to uh, in the 20 in the uh, 21st century here in America yeah well you know in 20 here in America in 2015 the US is uh, putting special operations forces in Syria except videos already been proven that we have American soldiers there right now um We've been doing stuff for a while, and we were just straight up lied to. You know, John Kerry kept trying to get us in there. Oh, they're using chemical weapons. How is that different from another weapon? You're killing people. Like, okay, so yeah, why do I need to go in there, Syria? Right. Why do I need to go in Syria? Why do I need to send my cousins and friends into Syria? Tell me. I, I don't get it. I don't, because I don't... Iraq worked really well, Brian, and Libya worked even better, and they think they can do the same thing. We get rid of Assad, and then... Syria is going to be the most uh, amazing uh, tourist attraction on the eastern half of the globe. Uh, well, you know, I did see this story. Uh, former DMX tour mate. Uh, sorry, I, I, I got to work on my DMX. I haven't, I haven't done that in a while. Um, the former DMX tour mate turned ISIS recruiter has been killed by a U.S. airstrike in Syria as well. And the best comment I saw in there was, "That's a wrap." Um, you know, but yeah. that's happening. Um, also, there's an asteroid that looks like a skull that's supposed to narrowly miss Earth today. Did you happen to catch that one? No, I didn't hear anything about that. Oh, ho, ho. spooky. <laughs> no, but the picture does kind of look like the top half of a skull missing the jaw. Um, and this is the picture released uh, through NASA. And it's uh, going to be swinging by here um, by 300,000 miles, slightly further away than the moon. Um, the asteroid named 2015 TB145 will be visible to those with good telescopes. So uh, I don't know. You, 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 do you have any apocalyptic um, 
Uh, do your spidey senses wonder about anything apocalyptic happening? Like we're reaching end times or there could be an event or, you know, obviously we talked a lot about 2012. Um, do, do, you yeah. believe, do you believe in prophecy, biblical prophecy or Nostra, you know, the soothsaying and uh, signs? Not anymore, Brian. No, that's a good question. Uh, no, I was definitely uh, concerned about, I'll admit, I was very concerned about 2012. I thought something was ha- going to happen. I just didn't know what. Um, but the only thing that I see on the, my radar, and yeah, no Planet X or anything like that, the only thing that uh, concerns me is maybe this, I forget they call it, the Shemitah or whatever, this this end of this cycle or a potential, you know, big stock market crash. I think there's, uh, you know, we're heading for some rough economic times uh, maybe in the beginning of next year. So that's kind of what I'm looking at. That's the only, but no, no asteroids, no, uh, you know, second comings, anything, any, anything biblical or anything like that. That's all I know. I know you uh, listen more to like uh, Coast to Coast and I, I like their material, but I haven't uh, been up to date on any of that stuff because I know there was talk like September 23rd or there was supposed to be some, I don't know, I thought there was going to be some asteroid or whatever, but now you're mentioning an asteroid. I, I never heard of I don't. I don't uh, keep up with that or anything, Nibiru, any of that stuff. So, uh, no, that, that, that's it. This, for perhaps uh, the end of this great uh, economic cycle and then perhaps uh, the beginning of some tough times coming up maybe at the end of the year or the beginning of next and that's all i know brian what what, what else what are you what are you hearing or what do you think well i don't i don't see anything on nibiru on cnn but this one's right there on cnn about the 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 comet meteoroid whatever they're they're technically calling it this uh, skull-shaped thing headed for us at halloween it is fun and spooky provided it does miss us um yeah, we'll, we'll see how that all plays out. Who knows? I'm just infinitely curious about stuff like that, whether I totally drink the Kool-Aid or not, who knows? But, you know, <clears throat> probably since the beginning of time, most people have thought that they're the generation where it's going to hit the fan, and, and maybe that's just part of what's built into our DNA. Of course, who built it into our DNA other than the Anunnaki, according to Zachariah Sitchin, an alien species that cloned us with the natives here that were uh, more animal-like and kind of got the combination hybrid worker bee so that we're smart enough to do the work, but dumb enough not to revolt and question their authority and it just makes you wonder about this system where you chase uh chase your tail your entire life so you can make money and what's money it's just they they don't even need gold anymore it's just pieces of paper so we're literally killing each other and killing ourselves uh working ourselves into an early grave to get pieces of paper so that they can live comfortably and it just makes you wonder since the story's so similar if there is some sort of truth to that hundreds of thousands of years ago way before um a a lot of archaeology or spirituality um can document or at least trace back it makes you question if the story's a little deeper and more complex than uh, a lot of people um, consider yeah, on the I surface. I agree. I think there is something very interesting about our history and in that uh, I don't know if we'll ever <laughs> know that or if that information is uh, buried somewhere and our reality is being controlled. Yes, the, the true history of humanity. And yeah, who knows? Who knows where that goes? Is it, did we just naturally evolve or were we put here with adam and eve or were we seated by aliens i think there's you know <laughs> who knows but so there's got to be something uh we can find yeah well there's it's a there's a good there's a there's um a, a great band called muse i'm sure a lot of people are familiar with muse but you know they've been singing and, and doing entire albums and songs about uh you know th- th- you know th- they will stop degrading us, you cannot control us, we will be victorious, and um, Mind Control, and their, their new album called Drones, and they, they have a, a song where it's um, the military-industrial complex. Uh, no, no, it's not that speech, it's a JFK speech about um, uh, kind of the, the powers at work behind the scenes that are intentionally trying to F with humanity for their own selfish gain, and you know, that band is fantastic to look around and consider that, you know, and of course the ancient alien theory. Uh, it, it all just blends together. The further back you look, you just go, well, is there a secret alien agenda back here? Where did all this technology come from? All of a sudden, you know, we got sto- you know, stoves and railroads, <clears throat> you know, pot-bellied stoves and railroads and telegraph, and then all of a sudden, you know, we got smartphones in our pocket. Like, are we that smart or... You know, is there a technology out there that was granted to us but for a price? 
Um, it, it just makes you wonder. But anyway, we could talk about that for an entire show on its own. Um, I don't know if you had anything else to add about the Republican debates, I know, or Hillary's emails, or um, if you had any other stuff. I have a couple other stories I wanted to get into here. If you want to buzz through a few stories, I mean, we could co- we don't have to, you know, cover the debate in, in detail, but it would be... Uh just to see who who do you think uh, who do you think won or do you think stood out or any of that kind of stuff. Well, you you said Carly Fiorina. Explain. I kind of liked uh, Carly Fiorina. I think I liked her answers. I don't mean I don't have a, 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 you know any of the transcripts or anything in front of me, but uh, no, I think she's done uh, pretty well. I have to do some more research on her because I'm not sure. I, I kind of you know never really took her too seriously, but. Uh, I know she impressed me with some of her answers. I know she's talking about, you know, getting rid of the tax codes or, you know, reducing them from, like, you know, 72,000 pages to three pages. I like that, and I like how she's, you know, talking about, uh, you know, the dangers of uh, you know, big government, uh, you know, reducing the size. There's things that she says that I do like, and I think that she would be a formidable opponent against Hillary, and it would totally change everything in that regard i'm not saying because i don't uh, I, i've never really done a, a ton of research on it because i never you know like i said i never took her that seriously but i know she she went from the you know the little table to the big table the big stage uh she er, you know made her way up there and i think she's uh, handled herself pretty good so i'm kind of I'm, I'm intrigued by her uh, of course you know ted cruz did really well um you know, uh, Marco Rubio had his moments. You know, Donald, Donald. I was kind of disappointed with uh, Rand Paul, but uh, I hope he sticks around. He's still probably my favorite. And that's it. I think you know. I think it's time for some of these guys to to depart. And I like I like Ben Carson a lot. I think he's a is really a, a nice guy. I think he might be a little over his head as a uh, running for you know president. Uh, but maybe you know he he could stick around, but I think it may be time for like you know Huckabee, Huckabee or Kasich to uh, exit. I'd love to see Bush exit, but I think he'll hang around as long as possible. So um, it'll be uh, it's interesting. But Brian, I don't, I don't know if you watched it or what you thought of it offhand. I'm just kind of going from <laughs> what I watched the other night, and I don't have any uh, you know lines in front of me. I do have some interesting tweets. Uh, that I you know retweeted around and it was uh, some some of the highlights there. But what what did you think, Brian? Well, I think it's time for Jeb Bush to go away. Um, I'm 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 pretty over this. Just just go, man. Um, yeah, he's pretty boring. I mean, he's a smart guy, but he's just he's rotten, corrupt, and he's just he's boring. He's, he's there's nothing interesting. I, I don't know why anybody would, would want to you know the third one. You know what I heard? And, uh, I heard John and Ken, um, I think it was them on KFI uh, out here in Los Angeles, a radio show, said, uh, Jeb Bush is oatmeal. <laughs> yep. I mean, oatmeal. he's oatmeal. Like, just what else do you want to know? Um, but but for me, there was a mo- one moment that stood out. It, it was this one. I tweeted it out instantaneously. I went, whoa, what was that? And I just rewound it and sent it out. Hopefully I pulled up the right clip here. The questions that have been asked so far in this debate illustrate why the American people don't trust the media. This is not a cage match. And you look at the questions. Donald Trump, are you a comic book villain? Ben Carson, can you do math? John Kasich, will you insult two people over here? Marco Rubio, why don't you resign? Jeb Bush, why have your numbers fallen? How about talking about the substantive issues people care about? You know, and, and that got a lot of people. That, that was my number one moment for the night. Ted Cruz jumped up a lot on my, hmm, what I consider voting for him meter. He's he's now in the top tier of of those people. I guess he always has been. Um, I, I, I won't consider voting for Hillary ever. I won't consider voting for Jeb ever. Um, but but Ted Cruz showed me something something good there. Um, and and it's it's it's. He, he's got a resume that backs it up. He's the type of person that, um, I don't know, I mean, you, you, you kind of know where he's coming from. You kind of know what you're getting. It's somebody that's not willing to just, you know, shrink away and uh, run away from an issue. 
he, he's somebody that's been doing it for a long time. And if you want to trust somebody that's going to have principles that are going, to, you know, and I like some things, but I don't like other things. Of course, you know, he's a little too neocon for me, a little too war hawkish, a little too conservative on social issues. Okay, fine, fine, fine. Although, I mean, it's, it's getting really hard to defend what Planned Parenthood's up to, even if you want to support abortion in general. Um, you know, he, he's up there in the list of, wow, uh, trying to triage the world's problems. I, I would just kind of trust that I don't think our budget would be growing. I don't think our deficit would be growing. I, I don't think uh, Ted Cruz would, would put up with a lot of that crap. So for me, he, he jumped up the list a little bit. I still don't have a perfect candidate. You know, th there's some things I like about maybe, uh, I mean, most of them have something good they're bringing to the table, um, except for Rick Santorum. Um, no, I'm just kidding. he even has some skill set. I just can't stand the guy in most of what he stands for. But Anybody in that small set they're they are they are they're there for they're a not reason. going anywhere they're not going to get up into the big stage carly earned her way up and she's uh she's been impressing me yeah so i mean uh, i, mean, I well, agree with you on cruz a lot i think he is yeah by far uh the smartest guy he's absolutely brilliant whether you like him or not and that he, you know he showed it right there and just how articulate he is he is a he is a master at the art of debate he's got a lot of history there he's a Harvard guy, he's uh, he, he is the real deal. But yes, he's uh, a little bit conservative, yes, socially, and uh, yeah, his foreign policy scares me. There's you know something, uh, yeah, I don't like. I think he's uh, definitely somebody I'd love to see him re replace McConnell uh, in the Senate, if um, you know. But uh, you know, he's definitely got some uh, appeal. I mean, I would take him for president over almost. Most of the field, he was, you know, definitely top five, maybe top three, and uh, you know, he's he's definitely good to have him uh, in there. Yeah. Well, anyway, what else? What else have you found this week of of note? Things you well, wanted to mention? Well, just going through the, uh, just maybe just wrap up some of the highlights. So here's one of the things I picked up from Carly Fiorina. Uh, somebody retweeted or I retweeted something. It says it says what's crony capitalist? Because she went on talking about crony capitalism, and that's something I totally agree with. I'm a big, you know, that, that's where we, you know, I differentiate from, like, some of the progressives out there, you know, who see capitalism as the problem, and they get to differentiate. Crony capitalism is a problem. The free market is, the, you know, the greatest thing ever. That's what built the middle class. That's what made this country what it is. And so she made comments about that. You know, what's crony capitalism? It's when the government gets so big and powerful that only the big and powerful can handle it. That was a great quote that won me, uh, that, that helped, uh, you know. She also said, oh, here's one from Ben Swan. It says, reduce the size of government is the only way to level the playing field between the big and powerful and the small and powerless. So those are great quotes from her. Um, here's one from Tan Vongino. doesn't take a graduate degree in economics to figure out that the government can't spend your money as well as you can. That ties into that budget thing going over. Right. Um, let's see. Um, but then, of course, yeah, so we had the one by Cruz, I retweeted, and then Marco Rubio had a great moment. Uh, Democrats have the ultimate super PAC, the mainstream media. Yep. Um, let's see, and then here we go, Ted Cruz, he's talking about auditing the Federal Reserve. I see that as a, you know, one of the bigger problems we have. Um, Rubio again with the big, uh, here's one from Larry Elder. <laughs> That we uh, interviewed over, uh, you interviewed in uh, in, in L.A. a few weeks Lunch ago. Lunch with says, Larry. Right it says Rubio takes major swipe at left wing media for slobbering all over Hillary's great Benghazi performance. Grand slam. I agree. So that's a great one from Larry. <laughs> um, of course, we go like <laughs> your buddy Mark Claire, Lions of Liberty. For Rand Paul says, bam, nice work, Rand, when he got to respond, pointing out the Fed culpability in housing, income inequality, etc. And then now CNBC can go back to ignoring him. Uh, another one, Rand Paul is making a great case for out at the Fed. We need sound money, not government juicing the economy. Um, <laughs> Ed Kasich bombing, <laughs> what he was talking about, uh, marijuana was not uh, too popular. I like this one. I feel like Kasich is going to cut the lights and show a film strip on marijuana. <laughs> so, 
<laughs> oh man! Well, Ohio's the the next battleground for that coming up here real soon. Uh, voting to legalize or decriminalize or you oh, know. Really, I didn't know that. Oh, Blake, look it up, man. It's it's only a couple weeks away. It's it's a I know big. Nevada. Oh, it's only a couple weeks away. It's, oh wow. Well, November. They're voting real soon on that. It's a huge issue. Huge. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, but okay. but but the problem is there's decriminalization versus legalization, and I have talked with Mark Claire oh, from wait. Lions of Liberty it's, it's, about that. But it's right. it's you know either do you take a step toward that or do you actually just open it up and say stop the mayhem here? Um, it's it's going to be interesting because you know if 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 it's going to just be a vote to allow a few large uh, you know big agra the big agriculture industry to be the only people that can grow stuff versus okay you can get your own seeds you can grow a few things on your own you're like why do you have to ask permission to grow a tomato like what kind of world are we living in i i, I shouldn't have to ask permission to brew beer or to grow a plant or to grow food like if i'm not causing a problem don't be a problem to me i think that's where most of this country stands on most of this stuff i don't think anyone wants to advocate someone being totally hopped up on heroin or vicodin or alcohol or marijuana all day long i don't think that's good for anybody that's not good for a nation it's not good for health care it's not good for public safety that's not good but I think the people need to be allowed to be left alone. So it's a little confusing what's going on in Ohio. I think there's two ballot initiatives, and I need to do a full show on it, actually. Thanks for reminding me. That, that needs to be my next one. I need to get somebody on, uh, maybe from normal, that can break it down and kind of describe exactly what's happening there. But yeah, I mean, in case it's wanting to turn off, dim the lights and show me a slideshow, um, it, it would be reefer madness or something from, <laughs> right. you know, 1930s or something. Yeah. exactly. Yeah, so that was a that was a highlight, uh, and of course uh, Chris Christie even had his moment. Um, Chris Christie ending the fantasy football conversation is the only thing I've he's ever done that I agree with. That's again from uh, Mark Claire, and I totally agree with him. Uh, not a Chris Christie fan, but that was a uh, is a good line. Um, Again, and then we've got uh, Jesse Ventura. I think this is about the last one, last highlight. Jeb more likely to win fantasy football in his fantasy campaign. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, hey, tag me on that right. one. T tag at American underscore media underscore. Shoot that one out. I didn't catch yeah, it's that. Yeah, right on the top of my list. You can probably just jump on and retweet. It's about the third one down. I don't know oh, if I okay. can tag that, but yeah, you can do, yeah, right on my, right there. Anyway, yeah, uh, but, uh, your your Twitter feed line. is of course at eccentric ninety nine for other people that to follow correct. as well. Yes, okay, yeah, I'm gonna scroll down and tweet that one out. That's good. His, yeah, where's that? Yep, Jeb more likely to win fan. Why, why is that only forty favorites and retweets? Hang on, okay, forty one. Jeb more likely <laughs> to win fantasy football than his fantasy campaign. That is great. Anyway, I'm I'm taking yeah. that. I, I I just shared that one. Anyhow. What yeah, else you got? Yeah, you have any other stories other than the debate? Anything else that caught your eye? I've had a couple, uh, not too many more, just a few. Yeah, let me buzz through what I've got. I mean, there's a uh, big immigrant invasion going through Europe. Sweden says their country's facing collapse due to refugees. Of course, we've got our own problems here on the border where it's kind of wide open and letting anybody in. Um, you got, uh, as you mentioned earlier, Syria. Um, you got Obama, who says uh, he promised there'd be no boots on the ground, and now he did deploy boots on the ground. Uh, we've got a little bit of, uh, we've got the global warming stuff. You got Vladimir Putin, who says that climate change is a geostrategic weapon. And then combined with that, you've got the NOAA refusing to hand over climate change documents to Congress. So I've kind of, you know, I, I want to see a big debate on climate change. I think it's, uh, I'm not really uh, uh, sold on the science. Right. Either is Putin, and now Congress is trying to get the uh, NOAA. God, so, not really, yeah. So, no, I'm just saying Vladimir Putin, yeah. he, he, he understands... He's going to give Edward Snowden a safe place after I consider him being a hero for defending our Fourth Amendment. He's the one stopping the mayhem over in Syria. He's the one questioning genetically modified food and uh, d d d climate change, d d d global warming, climate change, all these things. What, what Have we fallen through a wormhole? 
where know, where it's like it, Russia's it's totally the place strange. where you yeah, go, wow, you that's you like... Got even, yeah, these big federal agencies that are claiming that there's global warming and then the, the data is so... Uh, it, it's not very clear-cut. You know, you can't really trust how they're testing this stuff, these, these surface data that they're uh, pulling up with. They, they're <laughs> having trouble with the data to support everything. Uh, and the satellite data, which is, should be far more accurate, is showing no temperature increase for over 18 years within this kind of manipulated data that they're pulling from surface temperatures. Uh, they keep insisting it's the hottest year ever, blah, blah, blah. And then you're looking at it, and then the worst case scenario is that according to their numbers, we're 1.24 degrees Fahrenheit warmer than the 20th century average. And it's like, okay, well, even if that, they're not even sure if that's true or not. And then even if that is, is that like, oh, that's the, uh, that's the end of the world. All, the ice caps are going to melt and we're all going to drown. It's going to be water world. Uh, I'm, just, I'm, just, I'm just not buying it and I'm sick of it. And they never, and the people that are you know, pushing this stuff, they never want to have the debate. And now they don't want to release their information to prove that there's actually something going on. So the science is not settled. Well, you know, so uh, what? I, I don't get why they just keep it. It's just, in, it, yes, Brian, it, it's totally crazy land. And now the, the you know, the well, leader of Russia is just like, dude, this is, <laughs> they're probably, there's scientists are working on it and going, uh, we're not seeing anything. And uh, he's just saying it's a geostrategic weapon. It just totally, and they think that's just undermining uh, the energy sector because that's uh, part of Russia's economy is uh, oil. So you could debate that, but I mean, the, the, the whole point is have the big debate with all the scientists in the world, and you know, go over all the data and find out what's real. And if that's you know has anything to do with man, then we can take the steps to uh, to change things. But you know, they've had to switch their narrative. It's you know, man-made global warming to climate change, something that everybody can agree with. I mean, just their narrative is falling apart, and, you know, and they're, now they're being called out on it. So it'll be interesting to see where this goes from here. Well, you know, but I remember you when... Someone like Bernie or Hillary or Obama, who just, this is, uh, the science is settled, it's over, shut up. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it, it, it's done. It's over. I remember when we talked with Abby Martin at the United We Stand Festival last year, you and I, you know, and, and I, I, I just... It, it was so weird to me that, that that Russia was doing some things that you might go, huh? Is that good? Is it this is a good thing while our own government is doing a bad thing? Huh? Am I allowed to consider this as an option? What's going on? You know, we were talking. I I don't know. I, maybe it was Crimea we were talking about at the time, and I was asking her if <clears throat> Abby Martin from Russia, formerly of Russia today, if you know if she was able to legitimately criticize. Um, Putin and some of the actions and you know she said yeah she actually kind of took a lot of heat for that and you know it's interesting to see where she's going to land uh, where she's going to end up and um, you know how this whole geopolitical situation will end up you see that over in Syria I mean you're seeing warships from a lot of different places you're seeing Cuba you're seeing China you're seeing a whole uh, Iran I'm telling you it, there was a meme that got sent out um, I think it was Alex Freeman and it said, am I the only one here that doesn't realize that World War III has already started? And it's that picture of John Goodman from uh, The Big Lebowski where he's just like losing <laughs> oh, it. Yeah, he's he's cocking a gun and he's like in, in the bowling alley. Well, what is the exact – do you remember the real quote from that, what, what, the, what he was saying there? I'm trying to – off the top of my head. No, nah, I mean I should know that. I probably, it's just you know, an outburst. It times, it, it's it's right. an outburst yeah. from from John Goodman. And am I the only am I the one? only one that cares about the rules or something like that? <laughs> about yeah. someone's foot crossing the line or something, some miniature yeah, he thing. Yeah, over the line. It was a foul on a, on a, when he's throwing the bowling ball. Right. Nobody messes with the Jesus. Of course, it doesn't mess. <laughs> right. It's something else. But anyway, no. Um, but like you were, you know, like Don you said about the, right? the, the yeah. yeah. The, 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 um, you'd like to see the full debate on climate change. You know, speaking of debate, I, I had this down as a question to ask you. I want to circle back to it and then uh, wrap this yeah. up here. But as far as moderator, you know, how do you feel about bringing someone like a Michael Savage, a Mark Levin, a Rush Limbaugh, a Hugh Hewitt, a Bill Maher, a Sean Hannity, a Judge Andrew Napolitano, some of these really outspoken guys that are just so fed up with what's going on? Don't you think these would make way better moderators and just totally get – I don't know why the RNC would, would not put someone like that up there unless they hate 
the, the radio guys and of course their establishment and they don't want that uh, viewpoint out there. Shouldn't we demand something like that? That Bill Maher busts Hillary's chops on the left if he would actually ever do that. Who knows? Yeah, if... that's the thing. I was being with him. He's such a slime ball. I, I can't stand that guy. Uh, he's, so no, he, you know, he's, he's a, see him as a moderator. He's okay. No, so, but on the terrible. right, then. Be, I think he'd be soft. I think he would give softball questions to the Democrat. He's he's super partisan. No, I, I can't. I, I don't like. Well, then on the right, how about the people that take right. their own party to task? Yeah, I don't know about Levin. Um, Hugh Hewitt, of course, we met. He's a nice guy. He's a bit neoconish. I think uh, Judge Napolitano. I have a ton of respect for. And I'm kind of forgetting some of the names you've... Uh, oh, I, 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 Rush Limbaugh, Michael Savage. Savage I like. I, I would love to see uh, Savage and Judge Napolitano. I don't know if the the, uh, the left would go for Savage, but I, I think you know Judge Napolitano would be fantastic. I think he would probably be, be fairly highly respected on both the left yeah. and the right. He would be good. What about Real Rush? Real good. Uh, no, because the the left hates them. No, no, no. And I just no. I I just mean for the yeah. right now. Just for the right to to, to call to, their own people uh, to talk task. To the right, if we have it, yeah, that would be yeah, that would be interesting. I think people would would tune in for that just for him. I think that would be interesting. That I don't would know be a ratings you know. bonanza. That would be a yeah, ratings bonanza. Right. No, I don't think he would ask as good of questions as, as say a Napolitano or more kind of a libertarian leaning force. But uh, yes, would that be a, yeah rating bonanza? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Limbaugh and Trump. Oh yeah. man, that would be interesting just to hear what they would say. I, I don't know. I just I, I'm over the, the the debate style. I don't like it. I don't like how it's put together. Um, I, I I think if some of these radio guys would be given a shot, I, you know, I think Hannity would would do a great job. Um, yeah, probably Andrew Napolitano is at the top of my list for that. I, th I think he would just be phenomenal, and I think the GOP establishment would be, would be absolutely terrified to let him anywhere near them. Um, but I, I think that's what you need. I think you need one of your own who's willing to call you to task professionally, respectfully, sourced and cited and accurately on some of the things that just are not working for a large chunk of the American people. Um, I, I think it would be very telling and revealing. I, I think it would be dangerous as hell. I think it would be an amazing debate to watch if it were Judge Andrew, and it would be it, 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 uh, interesting beyond belief if it were a Limbaugh or a... Oh, the Sparks, if, if Michael Savage or Mark, Mark Levin were there, could you imagine the Sparks that would be flying? But I think it would be an honest, fair attack of things that are hypocritical, not kind of like in the gotcha aspect. It's just policy-wise, you're defending this thing despite the fact that X, Y, Z. These radio guys are awesome at it. So, I don't know. I just wanted I to agree. circle no, back. Like, uh, and to take you that, I think, you know, if you put Levin and Hannity and um, Savage, you know, to moderate, like, the Democratic debate, that would be fantastic. And, to, you know... Hold their feet to the fire, really go. I mean, they would. Re I mean, no. I don't think. I don't think Hillary or Bernie or O'Malley would take the stage against those three. Uh, that would be fantastic to turn the tables and really, yeah, make right. them squirm because they they would. And I don't know what they would do, and they would be really exposed in a lot of ways. Not that I'm a you know neocon fan, but I mean, I'm just saying you know as opposed to <laughs> the group that was the, the terrible moderators. Uh, that were involved in the last debate, right? Yeah, it'd be nice to uh, put the Democrats on the hot seat. All right. Well, I got another story, and I think I'm about ready to wrap it up. Did you have anything else important you wanted to kind of touch on as we kind of go out the door here? Well, I've got three that I can highlight. Uh, we've got the House Committee Chairman has moved to impeach the IRS chief. <laughs> so for uh, you know, holding up the Benga or hold sorry, holding up the IRS investigation, Lois Lerner's emails, targeting of conservatives. He's been obstructing uh, all of that because it's going to uh, come back on the administration most likely. So that's going on. We've got, uh, speaking of Ed Edward Snowden, you've got a bombshell that I picked up by the activist post that Europe is dropping its charges against Edward Snowden and is offering asylum and protection. Wow. So maybe uh, maybe Edward can get out of uh, Russia and maybe go and get some new options. That would be awesome. 
Um, and then, of course, lastly, I've got you know something that we should do here in America. Now, yeah, you've got Iceland, who uh, you know, where we in in America here, we bailed out the banks, and nobody went to jail, no one got in trouble, and now the bankers are as rich as ever, and we're just in as much debt as ever. Iceland did the opposite; they jailed the bankers. And now the uh, the Icelandic people are going to get paid in a bank sale. <laughs> this is a quick blurb. You got Iceland jailed its crooked bankers for their direct involvement in the financial crisis of 2008. Now every Icelander will receive a payout for the sale of one of its three largest banks. A finance minister, and I'm not going to even try to pronounce these uh, <laughs> names, oh, yeah. had his way, and he likely will. Icelanders will be paid. I don't know how what their I don't know what kind of currency they use, KR, uh, 30000 after the government takes over ownership of the bank. Uh, this this bank would be the second of the three largest banks under state proprietorship. So because Icelanders took control of their government, they effectively own the banks. And he believes that this will bring foreign capital into the country and ultimately fuel the economy, which incidentally remains the only European nation to recover fully from the 2008 crisis. Uh, Iceland even managed to pay its outstanding debt to the IMF in full in advance of the due date. So imagine how awesome that would be, Brian, if we said, you know what, now, you know, you guys uh, screwed us all over. We don't owe this money. We're paying it off, and we're taking control of our own government, bringing it for back to the people and not run by uh, <laughs> banks and special interests, uh, the oligarchy. And, uh, yeah, imagine the kind of recovery we could have if we could uh, – you know, hack off most of that uh, nineteen trillion dollar debt and, and and start things over and bring bring the government back to the people. It's pretty awesome. So yeah. that's uh, that's what's on my radar, Brian. That's all the last of I've got. It's interesting to think about that the, the the different way that this could have all went down, and that's been one of my major frustrations. Is you know, you and I have both participated in the housing crash. Uh, you know, we've been around it. We've been. Um, you know, a part of it we've lived through it. You know, it's different if you've, if you haven't had property in this time. But you know, living in Los Angeles and Las Vegas, um, you know, the, the, when this went down in 07, 08, 09, 10, 11, 12, you know, if we had gone a path that actually cared about the American people, we might have been able to take action and fix some of these problems. Instead, it's it's really that we've kicked the can down the road and we've actually made it worse. It's it's really disappointing. It's disgusting, and I think that's why uh, people like Ben Carson and Donald Trump and you know some of the outsiders people are looking to him saying, "Hey, man, I, no, nobody on the inside is fixing anything. We've given you 08, 09, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15 into 16. You know, that's quite a few years, eight years, nine years here uh, of the same people causing the same problems and." None, not coming up with decent solutions. So I think people are ready to just roll the dice and go, man, I'll put a farmer in there. I'll put a school teacher in there. I'll, I'll put a construction worker up there. I'll put a web developer up there. I'll put somebody of any random profession. I'm just going to roll the dice that they have got to be able to do a better job than you clowns because you're so bought and paid for and corrupted. You're blackmailed and controlled. We don't trust you people anymore. We're done with the politicians. You haven't earned our trust. Therefore, we'll, we'd roll the dice on anything. And, you know, one of the biggest appeals for me regarding Donald Trump, other than the fact that he speaks his mind, you know, love it or hate it, whatever, um, he's a guy that understands business. Oh, he went bankrupt. Yeah, I know. Got it. Yep. That, that's what happens. We've been operating bankrupt for decades. So, you know, if you were consistently bankrupt at everything you did the whole time and you never had any wins, that's continuing more of the Republican Democratic leadership. You want a guy that's built massive empires and occasionally had a, you know, a, getting knocked down a few times? Yep, that happens. But you bounce back, and we need someone that can bounce back. And it, it is so weird to think that, you know, Mitt Romney, with, with, with all of his venture capital experience, theoretically, that's exactly what this country needed. I didn't trust him. I, I, ne I never was able to just, I, I never bought it. His, his skill set should have been exactly the, the, the perfect thing on the resume for next president of the country. But something about it, I just couldn't trust how connected he was, and I just didn't trust where he was coming from. It kind of seemed manufactured more than genuine. But my final story, Blake, over here as we wrap this up, this is an interesting one. 
Muslim truckers who refuse to deliver alcohol have been awarded $240,000. A jury's awarded two hundred forty grand to two Muslim men who they say were fired from an Illinois trucking company after refusing to deliver alcohol. A judge found Morton-based Star Transport Incorporated violated the religious beliefs of Mahad Abbas Mohammed and the other guy. Um, a trial to deter- I'm not even gonna try. A trial to determine whether they were entitled to damages ended October 20th with the jury's judgment. So you have this here. This is a 2013 lawsuit filed the U.S. EEOC Equal Opportunity Oppor- Equal Employment Opportunity Commission, saying the men wouldn't deliver alcohol because it was against their religious values as practicing Muslims. The lawsuit claimed the company didn't provide them with a reasonable accommodation and by terminating them because of their religion. So. This is in stark contrast to the Obama administration, what they did here with the EEOC taking this lawsuit up to win a judgment to award Muslims who refuse to truck because there's alcohol on it. And the same administration that goes after a cake baking company, a bakery, for not baking a wedding cake and against that woman who wouldn't issue same-sex marriages because it went against her religious beliefs. Blake, I'm telling you, if, if, if this president and the administration didn't defend everything Muslim, no matter how wrong and idiotic or violent or ridiculous, and took every opportunity to bash Christians, I, I don't know what else to say about this at this point. I, I, I don't understand what's up is down, what's left is right. I, I don't get any of this except that he has a really strong pro-Islamic, anti-Christian agenda. Am I taking this too far here? Not necessarily. I think you definitely make a point uh, about that. And it, yes, he does seem to be this weird, uh, yeah, a double standard. or Yeah, it, it's very unusual. for. And there's, it's been very debated um, you know, where his uh, loyalties lie, whether he's Muslim or whether he's Christian. And there was... I remember there was controversy, like people are you're like upset on the left that people would dare think that he's a, a Muslim or something, but you know, when you look at the information, I, I don't know. I mean, I don't really know, I don't really care, but it's uh, it's confusing. And that whole thing with the Muhammad, that clock kid, that was just a horrible story. And the way that they jumped on that, it just it was seemed like it was totally staged, from, and it blew up in their face. And, you know, this is the first I heard of that other story. I, I don't really know what to make of that. I mean, if they do have, uh, I, I respect their religious views, and I don't know the, the whole situation, so I don't know if I'm going to pick a side on that. But there's certainly something unusual with this president and his, uh, his relationship with uh, uh, the nation of Islam, something suspicious. Um, that should probably be investigated. Maybe, maybe I don't well, know. Well, and it's 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 the right. same thing when it comes any time there's a black person that 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 had an incident, whether someone was shot yeah. and killed by police after they rob a place and walk in the street and attack an officer, and now you got to go out and sympathize this and encourage the Black Lives Matter people to just really turn it into a a cop witch hunt, if you will, uh, you know. And and I I can't. Sure, I could be accused of kissing, the, licking the boots, uh, you know, the bootstraps of, you know, the jackbooted thugs or what have you. But I mean, come on. I mean, like I said before, and you, you've known me over the years, I look at every situation individually. I don't look at it through the lens of race. I look at it through the lens of what happened, what can we prove, what's likely to have happened based on the information I do know, and how strongly do I feel about it. You know, it's something i got to break these down on an individual basis, but this president, you know, the Cambridge police acted stupidly, and if I had a son, he'd look like Trayvon, and all this stuff. It's like, if, it, if it's Muslim, or if it's black, this dude is just, regardless of what's going on and what the facts are, there's an outrage somewhere, and, and there's more white guilt coming down the road. And it, ju- it just gets old. It gets really old. I, I mean, this community organizer, I, I mean, right. I guess that's, that's the skill set we know. Agree. Yeah. You know, that's the skill set he, that he's coming from is, hey, let's find an, an air quote aggrieved person, and let's rile this up in the media, or let's rile this up behind the scenes. Let's try. It's the same shakedown stuff that Jesse Jackson and Al Sharpton have become famous for, and it's you know, there's a time and a place where you got to stand up for the little guy, whatever color, whatever religion they are, when they're being abused. I, I think any rational person is going to say that. I, I, I know very few people that would say, we should stand up for the little guy when they're being abused. Unless they're white. Unless they're black. Unless they're 
Asian, unless they're Christian, unless they're Muslim. But with this president, he will do that. Fort Hood was a, a workplace violence. It wasn't terrorism. He's up there gunning people down, yelling Allah al Akbar, and, and you're d denying the, 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 the families the right benefits because you're not declaring that they were killed in the name of terrorism. That's exactly what it was. But this guy goes out of his way to just defend every terrorist, every cop attacker, every, every criminal, every ridiculous lawsuit, every, you know, I just, I don't know, man. I, I just... It, yeah, it's been a very disappointing administration, to say the least. Uh, Obama yeah. was supposed to... You know, bring us together. He was, you know, half black, half white, and had a special, you know, tie to the Muslims, whatever. Um, he could have done amazing things and taken this country, you know, into a new level, a new era, and really made us into something. And instead, yes, he's uh, shown that he's, uh, yeah, the, the, the radical community organizer. He's, uh, Pretty divisive and secretive and manipulative and uh, yeah, it's, it's, I, I can't wait for it to be over. It's been absolutely set us back, um, and it's, it's time to go. Yeah, I I am so disappointed. I didn't vote for the man, but I was hoping that with his unique skill set, and background, and makeup, you know, he might have been a, a you know could have could have been an amazing uniter of this country. Could have been an amazing leader. And instead, it's just division after division. I mean, you know, to, to, to pretend that the EEOC is not talking with the White House about this particular case and that they're not being spoon-fed things to make an example out of people, give me a break. You know, I don't, I don't buy that for a second. But, hey, you know, that's why we have elections uh, and, and we're, we're seeing how the Democratic side is shaking out with Hillary and Bernie and the other clowns. And uh, with the Republican <laughs> side, left over, right? yeah, whatever. the other ones are gone. Just it, three now. It's, I mean, it's ridiculous. It, it's, it's very. I really wanted to see Joe Biden jump in to at least kind of challenge some of Hillary's stuff. But then again, Hillary's going to come out of this thing weak, weak, weak. Remember, that's what happened when when she ran up into into Obama. She wasn't practiced, and she got she got clocked. She got her clock. She got her clock cleaned. He cleaned her clock. Yeah. Uh, that's why I was saying it backward, but. Uh, <laughs> I had to be careful with my phrasing there, but anyhow, yeah, it um, it, it might leave Hillary very, very vulnerable to legitimate attacks, and Lord Almighty, if it's Trump against Hillary or a Ted Cruz against Hillary, I, I, oh, or Hillary. even Carly or Rand Paul, I think that the yeah, all there's a lot of fighters really could give her a run. I mean, yeah, the last thing we want to see is you know her going against Jeb or something. Oh like that. Lord, so, no, no, no. Yeah. The quicker Jeb gets out, the happier I'm gonna be. But who knows? Maybe I that's think when Carson. I love. I like Carson as a great man, but uh, he, he'll, he'll get eaten a lot. He'll be way over his head going head to head against Hillary. So, yeah, I'd like to see. Yeah, Trump, Rand, Ted Cruz, or Carly. I think those are the best chances. Uh, I think Rubio's. A, 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 I don't have anything personal against Rubio. I just he's surrounded by bad people. Right. He's going to be a puppet like Obama. Uh, that, that would be very bad. Yeah, or so George I W. Just, yeah, and all the neocon war hawks are all going to be around him. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. So, bad news, but uh, yeah, I think there's still a good field, so... We'll see how it goes. Another debate in a couple weeks, I think, in Milwaukee, I believe. Yeah, well, we'll follow that. Blake, I appreciate your time. Thanks for joining us, buddy. We'll talk again soon. And for everybody out there at the TNAM Radio Network, I appreciate you. I love you. I'm out. Peace. Hi, everybody. You're listening to Agree to Disagree with Brian Engelman. And this is John B. Wells reminding you that not only is Brian Engelman a cool guy and not only is the NewAmericanMedia.com a very cool platform, but here's a cool idea for you, too. Are you alone? Not really. Do you like dogs? Do you like cats? You do. Of course you do. Everybody does. One or the other, maybe even both. You know, there are a lot of dogs and cats that are at shelters right now, and if somebody doesn't take them home, they're going to wind up euthanized. That's a nice way of saying they're going to be killed, because there's simply not enough room. I guarantee it. The best dogs and the best cats, the best pets, come from shelters. There's something about dogs and cats they know. They know where they are. You walk through one of them, and certainly at least one is going to look at you and go, I wish you'd take me home. I'm in hell. Please take me out of here. It'll be the best thing that you ever did for your soul. You'll feel good about it. And not only that, but you have a friend for life. It doesn't matter if you got money, you don't have money. Well, it doesn't make any difference to a dog or a cat. All they need is the sound of your voice 
and maybe even the stroke of your hand, and they're fine. Maybe a little food every once in a while. The sweetest sound that those pets ever hear is your voice. Think it over and adopt a cat or a dog from a local shelter today. I'm telling you, you'll be glad you did.